We are presenting an antifungal drug by the name of itraconazole. It is presented by Jacob Berry, myself, Justin Brosno, Noah Sokmar, and Tristan Wietek. So what are fungal infections? Fungal infections are the overgrowth of fungus on or in the human body. The first of two types of fungal infections is the mild fungal infection. And these result in rashes, sinus issues, yeast infections, and digestive issues. And the second is the serious fungal infection. And this happens when the infection spreads to the bloodstream. So this is when it can spread to other parts of the body from the bloodstream. And the symptoms that are resultant from these types of infections are chronic joint pain, lung disease, and even potential death. So who is affected by fungal infections? Well, really anybody can become infected, but um, particularly um, prone to these infections are people that are immunocompromised. And an example of this is a patient who has AIDS will be uh, more prone to this infection and disease. Okay, so this problem is actually a lot more widespread than it is really noted to be. So annually about a billion people are affected, which is you know, about a seventh of the global population. And most of these infections occur on the skin, but over 150 million have serious infections and they require hospitalization. Continuing on the trend of how widespread this problem is, over 1.5 million people die annually. And that's actually three times more deaths than malaria every year. And so what this translates to is an economic number, an economic figure of $7.2 billion annually. And this figure is attributed to the cost of the drugs and the treatments and probably a lot more like the hospital bills and things of that nature. All right. The drug that we've studied to combat the problem of fungal infections is itraconazole. Itraconazole is a competitive inhibitor that binds at the 14-alpha demethylase enzyme active site. This right here is the 2D representation of the substrate. And you can see where the substrate interacts with the enzyme through two mechanisms. At the active site of the enzyme, you can find an iron atom located in the heme 601 area. It positions the substrate through interaction with the nitrogen. And the major non-covalent interaction between the enzyme and the substrate is a hydrogen bond formed between the hydroxyl group of the substrate and the carboxyl group of the serine 506. So as for the biochemical strategy, the drug itraconazole uses enzyme inhibition to prevent the protein from attaching to the active site, uh, a competitive inhibitor. And so through competitive inhibition, it, con it connects itself to the active site, um, preventing any of the protein that stabilizes the cell membrane from being produced. Um, because of this, the protein is not being able to be produced, which causes then the uh, membrane be to become rigid, um, which then eventually results in the burst and death of the cell. So for how does the itraconazole works, as you can see in this picture, this just shows the basic mechanism of how ergosterol, which is used to stabilize the cell membrane, how it is produced um, from lanesterol. Now, as you can see here, this is showing how itraconazole is a competitive inhibitor and the mechanism on how it prevents lanesterol from producing ergosterol. Um, and because of this inhibition, the cell membrane ends up not getting enough ergosterol, which then, as I said before, causes the cell to burst. So all of those strategies are well and good when they work. One of the new challenges approaching scientists today is drug resistance. So I'm sure a lot of people have heard about how bacteria are becoming more and more resistant to the antibiotics that have been prescribed. The same thing is happening with fungal infections. Fungi can become resistant to the drugs designed to kill them. And as of right now, there are really only three or four viable drug options for antifungal treatment. And recently, two species, namely Asparagillus and Candida auris, have been arising that are very resistant to um, antifungal drugs. 
So this is an up and coming issue around the world. And right now, not much is uh, being done to combat this. So it's a challenge facing um, new scientists and pharmaceutical companies. In light of that, what can we do about fungal infections now? As with anything, the best cure is prevention. The best way to stop fungal infections is to practice good hygiene by showering regularly and keeping your uh, common infection areas clean, such as the feet, genitals, and armpits, places that regularly are warm and moist. Um, also, a good tip is to air out gym sneakers and regularly wash your gym clothes to keep them nice and clean. If you do think that you might be infected, if you have a rash or something like that, you should see a healthcare professional. Most infections are mild, as we mentioned earlier, and can be treated with a simple topical cream. Uh, however, if you are immunocompromised and you think you're infected, you should seek medical help immediately. With a weakened immune system, you are at much higher risk for a serious infection and things can go downhill quickly. So thank you very much for your attention. Here are our sources if you'd like to do any more reading on your own. And we hope that you've learned something new today.